Granada, once inhabited by the Moors, a city crowned by hills. Once, 60,000 Muslims lived in the old Moorish city complex of al -Baysin. With their churches and sacred monuments, they coexisted peacefully alongside a Christian community. Since the 7th century BC, Iberians, Romans and West Goths settled here. But it was during Arab rule that the city first gained prominence. Up until the time of the first Islamic realm, the settlement was located on the hill above the ancient district of al -Baysin. This ancient district has retained its Moorish character right up until the present, although only a few of the buildings have survived the ravages of time. Following the expulsion of the Moriskis at the end of the 16th century, when many Arabs were forced into a religion in which they did not believe, a large number of dwellings fell into disrepair, but their new occupiers rebuilt them in similar style. The lemon trees of the walled gardens known as Carmen are a delight and have made this sunny hillside a popular sightseeing destination. In the narrow valleys between the Alhambra and al Baysan hills, the gentle river Darro makes its age-old journey towards the city centre. The houses along the riverside have been restored to a high standard and typical wooden balconies, illustrated facades and grated windows take us into another world. Banas Arabas, ancient Arab baths that date back to the 11th century, have been fully restored and are open to the public. Diffused light shines mysteriously into a number of small rooms through the star-shaped and octagonal openings in the roof. The Monastero de la Catuja is situated in the outskirts of the old town and was founded at the beginning of the 16th century as a Carthusian monastery. Arcades encircle the central yard of the complex. For the establishment of new churches and monasteries, this area was donated by El Gran Capitan, who was military general to the monarchy. The exquisitely decorated monastery church is a colossal sacred building in which the use of gold and marble was clearly not the subject of financial constraint. The sacristy and adjoining chapel were built in the 18th century, which accounts for their bold Baroque design.
The wealth of gold and marble is quite overwhelming and leaves the mind little room for devout contemplation. The monastery's annexes contain precious paintings, and a shady courtyard offers a good excuse to sit and take in the surroundings. Corral del Cabón is the only caravanserai on Spanish soil that has survived since the time of the Moors. It contains 60 cells on a three-tiered gallery that encircles the courtyard. The building dates back to the 14th century and it was subsequently used for the storage of coal. The Hospital Real dates back to the beginning of the 16th century. Originally an infirmary for the poor, it later became a hospital and today serves as the university's administrative offices. But Catholic kings were the founders of this former hospital, built in the style of a royal palace, with a courtyard and arcades. The ambitious restoration of this municipal building is complete in every detail and is a remarkable architectural achievement. Adjacent to it is the Jardines del Triunfo Park, of which the stylish fountain, the Fuente del Triunfo, is an intriguing sight. A masterpiece of well design with subtle water features that fascinate and deserve more than a second glance. Granada has a truly unique and captivating atmosphere, one that has inspired poets, musicians and countless travellers from all over the world. It's a lively and contemporary university city, and at the same time the guardian of an historic past that draws in a multitude of tourists keen to experience its special charm. In 1238, the Nazaridis founded the Kingdom of Granada. For the next 250 years, Granada was tantamount to an island of civilization in the mostly barbarian Europe of the Middle Ages. Small parks with water fountains and street cafes are an ideal place to linger. This really is another world, one of calm and tranquility. Along with Seville and Cordoba, Granada is known as one of the three pearls of Andalusia, classic southern Spain. Squares and fountains form the heart of the busy city centre. It was here in 1499 that Cardinal Cisneros put Arab literature to the torch. 
Al Kayseriya, once a silk market, even today possesses all the charm of an oriental souk. Each of the old town's narrow alleys are overshadowed by the huge cathedral. The Queen of Castile and the King of Aragon had the Capilla Real built next to the cathedral. After having fulfilled their goal of banishing Islam, this is where they chose to be interred. In 1504, the Catholic monarchy gave Enrique Igas the task of designing the cathedral. Thus, a highly impressive building of Isabellinic late Gothic design was created of which the burial chapel is divided by way of an ornate grating. The centre of the tomb is dominated by the marble mausoleums of Fernando and Isabella who lie at rest side by side. The couple died before the cathedral was completed, so their bones were stored in the San Francisco Monastery until they were finally laid to rest in 1521. The sacristy contains the insignias of Catholic kings, plus a fine collection of great Spanish, Flemish and Italian masters. Capilla Real is also an extraordinary museum that now provides a good insight into the artistry of this glorious epoch. The burial chapel is a domed circular building that has successfully managed to survive the centuries. The cathedral is located on the site of the city's former main mosque. Building commenced in late Gothic style and was completed in that of early Renaissance. The visual impact of the cathedral is somewhat diluted by the hustle and bustle of a modern city and the close proximity of the houses of the old town. but its interior is outstanding. At the center of this huge building with its five long naves is the Capilla Mayor. The vault of the 116 meter long, 67 meter wide and 48 meter high building is supported by a number of massive columns. Gold altars resplendent in paintings by Antonio Ribera, Alonso Cano and El Greco decorate the cathedral's interior. Church treasures are stored in the old Capitol Hall, including carpets from Brussels and a monstrance that was donated by Queen Isabella.
precious clerical objects and ceremonial garments, as well as magnificent paintings by various great masters, are exhibited in the Cathedral's museum. In 1669, the Cathedral's western façade, a monumental triumphal arch, was added. A triumphant symbol of Catholic Spain. But the city's most famous building is the Alhambra, former residence of the Arab conquerors. It's one of the most important Islamic buildings in Spain. The mighty La Alcazabar fortress rises up from the top of a hill and is separated from the rest of the Alhambra by huge walls. The view is breathtaking. The city extends to the plains below and in the background are the snow-covered mountain peaks of the Sierra Nevada. The huge Torre de la Vera watchtower is the highest point of the complex and was the first building of the Nasrida's dynasty, followed by living quarters and stables. The Moors built this gigantic structure in 1238 when Granada became an independent Islamic kingdom. The Alhambra served as a military headquarters, administrative center and royal residence until the expulsion of the Moors by Christian militia. Though he never resided in it, within the Red Castle, King Carl V built a monumental palace. This Renaissance building was not only designed for practical purposes, but also as a symbol of imperial power, a triumphant world order. The huge courtyard is encircled by two story high arcades. A number of gates lead into the suites of rooms on each floor. The ancient royal palace of the Nasrides monarchs is situated at the centre of the large castle complex and contains several buildings with splendidly furnished rooms that are connected by numerous courtyards. Through a small portal is a hall supported by pillars. That is where government ministers gathered and also where the Sultan administered justice. The splendor and simplicity of the filigree oriental ornaments on both ceilings and walls is quite amazing. And elegant semicircular arches add to the overall appeal.
fine pottery mosaics in strict geometrical form and decorative stone carvings enhance the oriental charm of this eye-catching complex. Arabian text adds even more to the shining splendor of bygone times and recreates the ambience of a wonderful epoch. Various courtyards contain water basins that reflect the walls as well as the Moorish windows and carved wooden gratings. The interior of the Alhambra is like a hidden treasure that lies expectantly beyond plain red walls waiting to be discovered. The most famous of the courtyards is the Lion Yard, of which the well and ornate arcades took several years to complete. At one time, the famous Lion Well was richly decorated, mainly in gold that was in stark contrast to the white marble. On its brim is a poem that describes the complex water system. The Lion Palace is divided into both residential and ceremonial areas. Much care was given to its unique and exquisite furnishings. Numerous rooms provide a clear view across the courtyard toward the Lion Well that is located at the center of the palace and is similar to the well of a temple in Jerusalem. Outside the palace buildings, there's a splendid garden that was originally designed for King Karl. The small palace annex and watchtower that are located by a water basin is one of the oldest sections of the Royal Arabian Palace. The wells and summer palace of the adjoining Moorish gardens in the Generalif were once a place of tranquility and paradise-like oasis. Due to its various wells and water features, the summer residence of the Nazarijan monarchs with its relaxing atmosphere and well-laid-out gardens is an impressive sight. In Andalusia, Islamic gardeners recreated their sort of Moorish garden design. Here, the dream of the 1001 nights has been turned into reality. The fiery south of Spain is a fantasy world, situated between Europe and Africa, a land of passion and ancient culture. And Granada is its shining pearl, set amid the evocative landscape of Andalusia.